so it was time to head out to the river where I have a little square foot garden if you're new to my channel I don't live here but I visit during the summer and so this will probably be my last harvest there and I noticed I had a lot of tomatoes that were ripening up and these are the little Jersey Devil paste tomatoes and they're great for sauces or soups that kind of thing and they always ripen up last for me every year I had one or two here that the birds had already taste tested for me so I discarded those and set them to the side but the rest will be great they just take about one or two days to ripen up on the counter I also had some wonderful Swiss chard and then some of these fennel heads that I've been harvesting every time I visit and I just love to cook with fennel seed so I'll take those home with me and let those dry. I checked all my carrots. They were not looking too good this year. You know, especially since I don't live here, I've not been able to water them. And when carrots receive inconsistent watering, a lot of times they won't mature properly or they'll just kind of dry out and look a little bit, for lack of a better word, hairy. <laughs> they have a lot of little roots coming out of them. Um, I did have some turnip greens here and I also had some of the red vein sorrel and this has come back for me from last year so I had a lot of that. The African blue basil was as big as a bush right now and there were a lot of bees all over it so attracting a lot of pollinators there and the parsley has just been beautiful every time I go out here. So this is what I ended up with and it inspired me to make some lentil soup so then I headed home and I also had some basil growing right there on my windowsill so I'm going to use some of that for this lentil soup. Now here are the ingredients that I'm going to use. Of course with soups a lot of times you can just change them out and substitute items for whatever it is that you have in your refrigerator but I just want to show you this. I've been making it for years and it's one of my favorite go-to soups especially as a mom because a lot of times I like to eat soup and salad and my boys and my husband they like meat and potatoes so <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and show you what I like to make. So here are the fresh ingredients I'm going to use. I'm also adding some serrano peppers and some rosemary to this. And I picked up a few things at the grocery store as well. And then of course I have some homemade chicken stock. I decided also to use some tarragon from the container garden. So let's go ahead and get started. So in my pot here, I think it's about a 10 or 12 quart pot, it's pretty big. I went ahead and browned my sausage. I really like to use a hot Italian sausage in here. I like it to be a little bit spicy. Um, but I've also tried chicken and beef. I would say that I love the sausage. I think it really makes a difference, but I'm not using a lot. It's mostly a vegetable and lentil soup. I drained my sausage and I poured out the grease. And now in go my mushrooms and I gave them a generous pinch of salt and now I'll just go ahead and um, cook them a little bit add a little bit of wine to kind of deglaze the pan a little bit and now it's looking and smelling pretty good so once the wine reduced a little bit and the mushrooms softened up I went ahead and removed them and put them with the sausage and now I'll go ahead and continue cooking the rest of the vegetables now in about one tablespoon of safflower oil, I went ahead and began to cook the rest of my vegetables, which included the celery, the onions, the peppers, and the carrots. Gave them a generous pinch of salt. Now I'll go in with some of the fennel seed that I've been drying. Um, I love fennel seed and so many different things and so this is the perfect soup for it so once everything was soft I guess I cooked this about probably 10 minutes because there's a lot of vegetables in here I went ahead and then added my serrano peppers with the rosemary and some garlic and I'll cook this for just a few minutes more and now in goes the chicken stock and the green beans and now the lentils so I increased my heat to about medium high. Then I brought it to a boil and then reduced it to a simmer. After about 15 to 20 minutes, I went ahead and tasted my lentil just to make sure it was getting tender and it was but it wasn't ready yet so I continued to cook it about another 10 minutes until they were tender 
the fresher they are, the more tender they'll be. And then I added my herbs and my Swiss chard and my turnip greens and then the tomatoes. I just want to release some of the liquid from the tomatoes. I still like for them to have a little bit of a freshness to them. So that's why I'm adding them last. And now I'll add my spinach. Now the fresher your lentils are, the quicker they'll cook. Of course, you can always use um, already cooked lentils too. You, sometimes you can find those in your freezer section or canned. And I also wanted a little bit more water in here, a little bit more liquid. And then last, the lemon juice. And now it looks like we are just about ready. I just want the spinach to wilt down just a tiny bit more. And now in goes the sausage and the mushrooms. I don't like to cook my mushrooms with everything else because I feel like I lose that little bit of texture that the mushrooms give to the soup. So that's why I also remove them at the very beginning. And I also added bay leaves to this. I forgot to tell you that. This is one of my favorite, I guess you could call it mommy lunches. So when everyone else is eating, you know, meat and potatoes, I can say, okay, I want either some soup or a salad. So this is usually what I go for. And right on top, I'll put some Parmesan cheese. And now it's time to dig in. It's so good with all of these different herbs. And this is what I do with the rest of it. I like to freeze it. Oh, and also don't forget to take out your bay leaves. You don't want to leave those in there. And so I will fill up about five or six quart jars, about three quarters of the way full. And the way that I like to freeze my soup is that I will let it cool. I don't want to put this into my refrigerator hot because it'll ruin everything else in my refrigerator. So I let it cool, almost come to room temperature for a couple of hours on my counter. And then I will transfer it to my refrigerator where I'll let it stay overnight. And the next day I'll go ahead and put it in my freezer. And I just let it defrost when I'm ready to use it. I'll bring it out in the morning and let it sit on my counter. And then I have it defrosted, usually halfway by lunchtime. And then the other half, I can let it continue to defrost. And I'll use that um, uh, later in the week for lunch again. So there you go. I hope you're able to try it soon. And as always, you can head on over to my playlist section on my channel. And over there, you'll find a lot more recipes. Click that little bell off to the right of the subscribe button and you'll receive all notifications for my channel. Feel free to share this on your favorite social media platform. I sure would appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day.